Good morning, first grade. Welcome to Bible time. Let's go ahead and open in a word of prayer today. And remember, you think about what you want to ask the Lord for and what you want to thank him for. And while I'm praying, remember, you can pray and say everything you want to him. And he hears every single word because he loves you. He cares about you. He knows how many hairs are on your head. He knows how many came out yesterday. He um, cares about every detail of your life, and he wants to be a part of your life. Just as much as um, your parents love to be in your life, the Lord loves it just as much because he is your Heavenly Father. Well, let's go to him today and thank him for all of our blessings. And while I'm praying, you ask him for whatever you want help with today, and I'll do the same. Dear Lord, thank you for this Bible time today with our first grade family. Thank you that even if we are not together in our classroom, we can still be together in different homes and we can connect with each other around your word and learn about you this morning. Lord, we thank you for each boy and girl and each mom and dad that are homeschooling right now. They are working so hard with not just their first grader, but maybe they have other children and other classes that are at home with them right now. Lord, I just pray a special blessing on each mom and dad that you would continue to bless them and help them. We thank you for all of their willingness during this time where we're separate and trying to homeschool and do different things, but we do thank you for this extra time with our family. We thank you that um, you sent Jesus for us. We thank you for this sweet time where we have been learning about how much you loved us. You loved us to the point of death, even the death on a cross. We thank you that you stepped in front of us and said, do not punish them for their sin. Punish me instead. You took it all, Lord, and you did it with us on your mind and us in your heart. We thank you that if we ask you to be our savior, you promise us that nothing, nothing can pluck us from your hand. And we just commit each child, each boy and girl, each family, each sweet mom and dad, and each sibling from each family into your care today. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, yesterday we had a much sadder lesson. We had Jesus being um, beaten and punished for things that he did not do. We had a disciple sell him and tell the soldiers where to find him for silver. And what a betrayal that must have been for the Lord. So if you've ever had a friend that's not very nice to you or says things that aren't very kind or kind of pokes at you, that's not very kind, is it? That's not Christ-like whatsoever. But Judas did more than that. He actually betrayed the Lord. Just remember, no matter what you go through, the Lord has been through it. He was a six-year-old or a seven-year-old on earth. He was on earth till he was 33. He's had people pick on him. People laugh at him. Remember when he said, the little girl is not dead. She's only sleeping. What did everyone around him do? They all started laughing and making fun of him. We don't ever want to be like those people, do we? We want to be happy, kind people. We want to be like Jesus was. He was always kind. He always had time for children. He never told them to get away. In fact, he got mad if anyone did tell his children to get away, didn't he? He loved the children to come unto him. He didn't mind if they crowded him, if they were all over him. He said, never forbid them and never discourage them. Well, today our lesson is going to be a lot happier because we know that if anything is going bad, the Lord can turn it into something good. The Bible promises that he works all things together for good to those who love him. Well, the evening that Jesus died on the cross, there was a secret follower of Jesus. He did not tell anyone that he was a Christian because he might have been afraid to be arrested or afraid for his life. His name was Joseph of Arimathea. Let's say that three times. Joseph of Arimathea, Joseph of Arimathea, Joseph of Arimathea. This wasn't Joseph 
like Jesus's earthly father, Joseph. This was someone else with that name. Just like we have two Lilas at our school. We have Lila in our class, and we have a Lila that's in third grade. And we have an Ethan who is in seventh grade, and an Ethan who is in the high school. So we have all different, different kids that have maybe a similar name. So Joseph of Arimathea was a different Joseph. He went to Pilate and he said, Pilate, I would like Jesus's body to bury. Now remember, Pilate did not think Jesus did anything wrong, but Pilate sold, or Pilate said, take him and do with him what you want. Pilate let them crucify the Lord, even though he didn't think the Lord deserved to be crucified. We should always stand up and do the right thing. If someone, if we think someone doesn't deserve something or someone is being picked on, we should always stand up and stop that, shouldn't we? We should not be like those people. Well, Pilate actually said that he could. He and another private follower named Nicodemus took Jesus' body to a brand new tomb in a garden that had never ever had a body.